Okay, so you might see a question that looks like this. It says find n and m such that x to the power of n times y to the power of m is an integrating factor of some differential equation. So at first you're looking at this and it's like, holy crap, what am I doing? This is way different than the last question that we looked at with integrating factors. Uh, don't worry, it's okay. Uh, we don't know much about this differential equation, but we do know that it has this integrating factor. So if we multiply this integrating factor by everything, it'll still be equal to zero. So first of all, um, let's do that. But we can rewrite this. This is a little messy. Uh, we can say this is the same thing as x plus xy squared. All right, so what we want to do is we want to multiply everything by this integrating factor. So we will have x to the n y to the m times the first stuff, the first term, the first stuff in the first term, whatever, uh, x squared y cubed, that will be dx. Um, now we will add this, uh, we have to multiply again, integrating factor, x to the n, y to the m times x plus xy squared dy. And this is all still equal to zero. So another assumption that we get to make be, is that we said this has an integrating factor, and if it if it's in this form of a, of an exact equation, but it requires an integrating factor, that means once we multiply the integrating factor to it, it will become an exact equation, and this here will be what we call m, and this here will be what we call n. Okay, capital M and capital N. Notice these are lowercase. Um, we just use this convention m and n usually in the exact differential equations. So what we need to do is we can just simplify this a little bit. Um, but also, um, before we simplify, we know that the partial derivative of m, if it is exact, which we now know it is because we multiplied this integrating factor, then the partial integral, partial derivative of m with respect to y will be equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x. So we can just go ahead and write that. So we can say d dy of m, and we're just going to simplify m. So we will have x to the power of n plus 2 times y to the power of m plus 3 is going to be equal to, and right, we just, we just distributed these through using exponent rules. Uh, it will be equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x, d dx of this guy. So let's uh, let's distribute this through. So we will have x to the power of n plus 1 times y to the power of m. That's the first term. Plus the second term, we'll have x to the power of n plus 1 times y to the power of m plus 2 plus 2. Okay, so that's great. Uh, we, we still don't know the general solution or anything like that, and we don't need the general solution. We're only asked to find n and m, lowercase. So uh, let's just keep working on this, and we'll see where it takes us. So let's take the partial derivative of this guy with respect to y. So we will get m plus 3 times x to the power of n plus 2 times y to the power of m plus 2, right? We took the partial derivative with respect to y. Now we can say on this side, this is equal to, we need to take the, all the partial derivatives with respect to x. So the first term will get n plus 1 times x to the power of n, right? When we have n to the power of n, x to the power of n plus 1 minus 1, that's just x to the power of n. And the y to the m remains untouched. And then we go here, we have plus, take the partial derivative of the second term with respect to x again. So we get n plus 1 times x to the power of n, and then times y to the power of m plus 2. All right, so let's move this all over to the same side. Um, in order to save some time, what we can do is we can just say this will become minus, this will become minus, and this is all equal to zero, right? We just shifted them, we just subtracted these two terms from both sides. So that gives us the first term minus the next two equals zero. Okay, so now let's look at this. If you guys remember something, let's maybe just look at like a general quadratic equation. We have some constants and variables. We would have something like ax 
actually maybe let's write it down a little farther. We have something like a x squared uh, plus b x plus c is equal to zero. So for the, in order for this to be zero, that means our a is equal to zero, and we would have that b is equal to zero, and we would have that c is equal to zero. Well, these are our, these will be the constants in our equation. Now, in our equation, n and m are constants. These aren't going to be changing, whereas x and y are the variables. So we can kind of look at this like uh, this would be similar to the a, the b, and the c, or just notice that these are all going to be constant terms. So the, with that said, we can do make the same sort of assumption or use the same sort of logic here to say that, well, then m plus 3 has to be equal to 0 and then n plus 1 has to be equal to 0 and also again for the last term n plus 1 well it still has to be equal to 0 and from this we can find that well m has to be equal to negative 3 and n has to be equal to negative 1 and there we go. We have m and n. We found out what the numbers are. Uh, and that's exactly what the question was asking for. So we solved it. And if we want to go one step further, we can say that our integrating factor, you know, we could call it mu or something. Wait, I guess we could say that it is x to the minus 1 uh, times y to the power of minus 3. But really, the question was only asking for what is m and n. So there you go. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video.